Alrighty folks, this is Lurch from Ireland Gaming and welcome back to another episode of From the Depths. I'm here in the Vehicle Designer and a lot of people have been asking for a basic plane tutorial and just sort of how to build one, how it all works. So for this episode I'm going to be building a small unarmed plane to explain the basic principles of designing a simple aircraft. First of all, you have to have an idea how big you want your plane to be. For this example, we are going teeny teeny tiny. Now first of all you want to build the smallest engine you can get away with. Now I plan to use one large thruster so I need 45 energy and another 20 for our fuel processor. So we need about 70 power from our engine. In this case we have 93 so that's plenty. Now get your fuel storage and processor added in somewhere and we have them in here and squeeze in your AI and we need an aerial AI for this and a water start card. If you're adding weapons, you can add the relevant cards here as well. And you really need to think about your weapon system at this point, right at the start, before you actually go on and start building the rest of the craft around it. Now, while doing this, be mindful of how many block faces are in the airstream. More faces equals more drag. You can use slopes to mitigate this, and four meter slopes are the most effective, but it is also best to minimize these too. It is much better for aerodynamics to build a long, thin craft. You should now be in a position where you have the core of your aircraft constructed. It might be worth adding a chair somewhere too, as I always forget. Now, we should also add balloons at this stage for the AI to make use of. I recommend placing these in such a way that your craft tilts slightly upwards when your balloons deploy. This helps the aircraft get onto a nice flat, uh, flight pattern. If you are pointing downwards, then the thrusters turn on again, you're going to nose straight into the water, and that sucks. You have to redeploy your balloons and off you go again. Before we add wings and thrust, we can do some shaping to improve the aerodynamics and add some slopes. You want to keep the weight down, it's really important. Having a big block of steel in the air is heavy, and it needs a lot of lift to keep it there. More weight means bigger wings, which is more drag, and thus slows your aircraft down. You will then need more thrust to get the same speed. Yes, I am aware that items on spin blocks don't cause drag before you go putting it in the comments, but I consider this an exploit and I don't use it. You can even put slopes in front of your wings to reduce the drag, but I much prefer my wings to look like wings. So use it if you wish, but if it gets patched and changed, then well, it's going to break your aircraft. Now. We should have a nice aerodynamic body with an AI, an engine, a fuel processor, some fuel and some balloons, probably in your case some weapons as well. For a small aircraft like this I recommend missiles. Just don't forget to include your ammo barrels as well or account for an ammo processor when you're building your plane. Finally it's time to add our control surfaces, wings and thrusters. We can put the tail plane on first. We want this for pitch and yaw control, and the number of tail planes required is proportional to the size of your craft, and probably the speed as well. With a small aircraft you really don't need that many of them, and try and keep them towards the back of your aircraft for stability. The larger the distance from your centre of mass, it gives them more control authority and makes them a little bit more effective. Now, don't forget, more faces in the airstream means more drag, so I find a long thin tail plane to be much more effective. Next. It is time to find your centre of mass. Shown by the bread indicator, it's best to use P to shrink the blocks and make it easier to see. Sometimes the centre of mass ends up between blocks, making it difficult to line your thrusters up with it directly. You can use any sort of blocks placed above or below the centre of mass to tweak it to your desired location, but it can also work to your advantage. Having offset thrust makes your craft have a wobbly flight pattern, like the much maligned flying squirrel. As long as you have enough control surfaces to correct for the offset, this can make your plane extremely difficult to hit. With something as lightly armoured as a plane, this could be the difference between life and death. Now that we have our centre of mass where we want it, the plane is almost complete. Go directly in line with your centre of mass and place your thruster on the back, or place above or below based on what way you want it to work. Now you can use thrust left and right of the centre of mass as long as they are equally balanced or you can use other sorts of propulsion such as spin blocks or heli blades to drive the plane forward. These require a little bit of ACB wizardry though so I won't be covering them here. 
Now we can add the wings. I prefer to do this in line with and behind the centre of mass. It is best to have your centre of lift behind your centre of mass and you can see where your centre of lift is by the grey line when the forces are shown. You can press backslash, that's the button beside Z, to turn this on in build mode and it lets you see all the forces that are being acted upon on your ship. Now obviously it's going to have to be moving forward to show your lift. With your lift configured behind your centre of mass, your plane should be constantly nosing downwards just a little and it will be corrected for by the tail planes and this stops it flying off into space. Once we have a suitably large wing to keep our plane airborne, which can take a bit of trial and error, it's time to add the ailerons. Now these are used for roll control and combined with our tail planes, allow the AI to make your aircraft turn. Again, the number of these that are required is based on the size of your aircraft. You should now have a fully functioning plane. We just need to configure the AI to do what we want it to do. Now, angle of deviation before turn started dictates how far your ship must be off course before the AI begins yawing to the left or right. Set this value to zero if you want your plane to point directly at the next waypoint or a little higher for a less direct path. I find adding about 5 to 10 degrees here gives your plane a slight wobble in flight which helps confuse the AI target prediction and keeps your plane alive a little bit longer. Angle of deviation before roll to turn does exactly what it says. It dictates when the plane will begin a roll manoeuvre and start turning sharper. A very low value here will give your ship a very wobbly flight pattern as it can't compensate instantly, but this can hurt your ability to maintain heading unless you have sufficient control services. A high value will give you long languid turns and is better for slow heavy aircraft that don't have a lot of manoeuvrability. Most extreme angle we aim for to facilitate roll based turn, again, does exactly what it says, even though it's a bit of a mouthful. But it defaults to 100, which in effect turns your aircraft a little more than completely bloody sideways to turn. Now this is absolutely fine for a higher altitude aircraft or a manoeuvrable jet, but unless you have lots of pitch and roll authority, you might find yourself falling out of the sky. And that's never fun. You want to set this much, much lower for something less manoeuvrable, say about 40. That'll allow you to maintain plenty of lift, but give you quite a large turning radius. Now the rest of the AI settings are fairly self-explanatory. If you find yourself crashing into the water a lot, adjust the minimum and cruising altitudes. As far as the attack run parameters are concerned, I normally fiddle with these repeatedly until I find something I like. It's entirely based on the aircraft. What settings will be the most effective here? So. There is a basic tutorial on how to build aircraft. Now this is a very, very, oh, I don't know, annoying little shitbag. It's been flying around here for about, well, the entire duration that I've been talking and this baby paddle gunner just can't hit it. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I know plane is perfect off the factory line and these little guys were no exception. They took quite a bit of tweaking before I got something that I was sort of happy with. But now they do a fairly good job of avoiding missiles. I trimmed the length of the wing back, but made it longer lengthways so that I have more lift surfaces and it pulls the centre of lift a little bit closer to centre of mass. And I added a couple of cheeky tail fins on the back here, right as far back as I could to give a little bit more control authority. And other than that, it's just AI tweaks. We're sitting at 15 angle deviation before start, 40 before rule to turn. Most extreme angle we're aiming for is 80 and I've pulled the minimum altitude down to 100 just to give it a little more flight space. And other than that I haven't changed anything. Oh wait, I did a lapse time before tack run down to 10 seconds so it interrupts itself more often. It makes it a little bit more difficult to hit. But I'm going to drop the blueprint for this little fella in, on the workshop for you guys to play with. So yeah, you can have a look at it yourself and see what you think. Uh, you might maybe learn something from it or just to have a base for a really annoying little fighter. You can apply these principles to building aircraft up to a much larger size. I mean, I used the exact same principles when building my Badger thruster craft, but I added thrusters to do a lot of my lift instead of just using tail planes. Ow, my face. <laughs> As you see, they're not quite 100% indestructible. But I do hope you enjoy the episode. I hope you find the information that I've given you here a little bit useful. And... Uh, yeah, I hope you can apply it in maybe building your own planes. 
Uh, any likes, subs or comments are really, really awesome. I love hearing from you guys. I read every single comment. I do my very best to reply to all of them. As always, take it handy and have a bloody good day.